Um, to get the results that you've never had, you got to do things that you've never done. Mm. And that stuck with me. And when I got to McMurray, I started to do things that I had never done, you know, getting up at 6 a.m., working out because we only had one gym, um, staying late after practice, you know, uh, obviously it's Division three, so – you gotta be self motivated to 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 you know get your get to reach your goal, and I just knew I had a small window of opportunity, and I just went in there with that mindset of like I'm, I want to be a pro one day, and like I don't want to look back and have any regrets. Young ball podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast with Jonathan Jones. Uh, and we're here in the Speak Your Success Media Studios. And man, uh, every time I get the opportunity to sit down uh, with another accomplished individual who's done amazing things and I know who can add value to your life, my life, and everybody else listening, you know, I got to bring them in, right? So today we're, we're sitting here with, man, with, with a gentleman who He's, he's addicted to the game, okay? I mean, there, there, there's another way to say it. He, he's, he's addicted to the game, uh, but he really, he really respects the game of uh, basketball, has, has, has played at, at the highest level, and even, even further than that, he's been able to teach others, right? So it's, it's one thing for you to be successful playing a sport or doing whatever it is that you might do, but it's another thing when you have the opportunity to learn the game, master the game, and then teach others the game. So, man, we're, we're here with a phenomenal hooper, uh, an amazing scorer, and even beyond that, an individual who believes in developing athletes for the long haul, for life. Man, we got, we got Coach Jay Hart in the building. Coach, how you feeling? Man, good, man. I appreciate you, man. That's a heck of an introduction. Man. You made me feel like I'm somebody. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> man, well, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you, you, you de- definitely are, man. And uh, well, is, is there anything I missed? Is there, is there anything you know I, I should have dove in a little bit more on? I'll, I'll kick the mic to you and let you, you know. Nah, man, you hit, you 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 spoke well on me. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. For sure, man. Good to be here. Yeah, for sure. So I, I had to reach out because, I mean, I, I told you before, but, man, I, I'm, I'm going to kick it off with, with this. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I am can go to my notes on this one. I'm going to go to my notes on this one because I remember hooping against you when you was at McMurray. Right. But, but, but let, let's, let's rewind the clock back a little bit because before, before you were at McMurray, you was at Washburn, right? right? You was at Washburn, mm-hmm. and then it says you averaged five points a game, <laughs> right? Right. No, no, I, I ain't throwing shade. I'm, I'm just, I'm, this is going somewhere, right? So you average five at, at Washburn, at, at Washburn, yeah. and then from there, when you went to McMurray, then you averaged twenty, bro. <laughs> talk, talk to us real quick. I, I, just, I just want you to talk about the mindset of going from there to twenty. Talk, just man, talk, talk with us, coach. Talk with us a little bit. Um, I mean, um, my time back at Washburn. Um, it was a good Division two school. Um, I really loved Washburn. It was great. Um, but I, I was at a different point. Of, I was at a different time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my grandpa um, while I, when I got to Washburn. I lost my grandpa. My grandma and my grandpa raised me. Did help my mom raise me a lot. So I, there was an influ, influential piece in my life. And I lost my grandpa and I hurt my ankle for the first time ever um, at Washburn. So I've never been injured before. Um, and never lost somebody that close to me before and knowing that um, my grandma would need me. And, um, you know, I just I just couldn't get right at Washburn, man. I couldn't get right. And um, I ended up, you know, obviously uh, today they would call it the transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I hopped in my own transfer yeah. portal. And I told my grandma I would come home and, and go to school close to Texas. I didn't care if it was D1, D2, or D3. And, um, you know, I went to McMurray and, um, shoot, man, the coaches from McMurray came to Dallas, came to, who's actually still living in the projects in South Dallas at that time. And they came um, and did everything in their power to get me there. And I went and everything was great about it. Um, it gave me an opportunity to, to live out my dream, which become a professional basketball player. And But go back to where you're talking about the mindset. I knew I had a short window of opportunity that I had to seize my moment and I had to do things that I had never done before. Um, it's, it's a quote that I don't know what, who, who made this quote up, but um, to get the results that you've never had, you got to do things that you've never done. Mm. And that stuck with me. And when I got to McMurray, I started to do things that I had never done, you know, getting up at 6 a.m., working out because we only had one gym. Um 
staying late after practice, you know, uh, obviously it's division three, so you got to be self motivated to 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 you know get your get to reach your goal. And I just knew I had a small window of opportunity, and I just went in there with that mindset, of like I'm, I want to be a pro one day, and like I don't want to look back and have any regrets. And that's kind of uh, how that transpired. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I I wanted to ask that because I was I was just excited about that. I got a little got a little ahead of myself. But like, let's rewind it a little bit. So you so you so you went to you was it South Garland or North Garland? South Garland. Okay, so you went to South Garland. But before, bef- like during that time, did you see anybody else go pro coming out of South Garland, or did you see anybody? To be honest, to be honest, man, um, I grew up in South Dallas, and um. I when I got to the, I went to every school in South Dallas, but high school. I didn't go to Lincoln. I didn't go to Madison, which all my family went. And when I got to the eighth grade, I knew in my heart that I didn't need to go to school in South Dallas. Mm. I, I knew in my heart. Obviously, that's where we live, so I didn't know like if I if I didn't know if God would would bring me, you know. <laughs> A uh, garden angel or somebody to pick me up and take me from South Dallas or whatever, <laughs> because I was on pay, I was on track to go to Lincoln, and that's where I was going. But I knew in my heart that I wouldn't have made it because I needed to be out of the environment that I grew up in to mm. to, to to better myself. And I knew that in my heart, and I didn't want to do it neither. But I went to South Garland because of my AU coach. Um, he convinced my, my mom and my grandma like he, he should come to my high school um, it'd be good for him and I went and I moved out to Garland and I didn't know so I didn't know nobody um, I was like it was like a culture shock um, obviously because in South Dallas it's nothing but black people Yeah. Uh, the white the first time I encountered a, a Caucasian person is probably the 8th ninth grade um, I encountered prior to that the, the, a white person that I encountered was the police so going to South Carolina was a big culture shock for me, but it was what I needed. I was able to, I was able to adapt and like, I was able to. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, I was able to brush off the rough edges of mm. of, of, of 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 my life and like learn how to talk to people and be diverse and get different friends from different races and learn about different things that the things that intrigue me. That I didn't know it intrig- intrigued me from when I was living where I was living, you know. Mm. And so it was, it was, it was great for me going to South Garland, and, and I had to earn it. Like I didn't know nobody, so when I went to school, I met the basketball coaches. Like they literally didn't know who I am, know oh, who wow. I was. They wow. wanted, they asked me where I came from, so nothing was handed to me. I had to go in there and work and and earn a spot, and you know, it, 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 I, I saw guys that played professional basketball, but all I knew. Was that they played overseas? They left when they played basketball, made money, came home. I did. Nobody never sat me down and taught me the ins and outs, and that was something that I kind of learned on my own. Which is why I talk to guys now more about the going to play and making money. I talk to them about the day to day and how your mental is going to be, and you know the day to day of being in uh, being overseas. Because only players, young players, only hear about the glitz and the glamour. They don't hear about the backside. So yeah, I I, I I had never talked to nobody that that played pro before, um, other than you know watch seeing guys that someone told me that he played he played pro ball. Man, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's all like I mean that that's all we hear in terms of guys hooping overseas. We don't we don't hear about the different levels and right. You know we we don't hear like because I know you went what four it was four different countries in ten uh, years. So was, I played um I played in uh, I can't. Off the top of my head, I can't remember how many countries I played in, but I played in five continents out of the seven. So mm. I've been, uh, I've been all around the world for sure. I've been, I've played in, a, I played in just about every continent except for two. Yeah. So and then, and then you you were able to experience the different levels because like I know you I know Mexico and uh, and then you were I know you're in Asia yeah, because it's. Marco. Like it's the, can you can you just talk about just the different levels just for a second? Because I know there's somebody out there like, man, I'm gonna go overseas and you know they just feel like they just gonna be, you know, just <laughs> just just living just living it up. Living it up. Uh, so like it obviously I won't go too 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 in depth on the levels and things like that, but it is it's a bunch of basketball being played, man, around the world, hmm. and you can make you can make a lot of money playing this game. You can you can make a ton of money playing this game in different places. But the thing is. 
it depends on you, the player, what you want out of this. Because I know guys who just go to Asia and make a lot of money and ride off into the sunset. I mean, and I be, I say ride off into the sunset. They have their trials and tribulations, but that's what it's about over there. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go over there and play, and they're gonna pay you a lot of money to come over there and score a lot of points. You might not you not you might not never go to Euro League or to the highest levels of, of, of Europe, but you're going to make a lot of money to take care of your family. And I know guys that that's okay with that. And I also know guys that started at D3s or D2s and worked their way up and got to a certain a certain amount, um, a certain level um, overseas. And, you know, that was that was, that was was good for good for them. And me personally, myself, um, and I explain this to, play, to young um, athletes all the time right now, um, the thing about my journey is I, I didn't make a million dollars playing basketball um, professionally, but I made some decent money um, at, at different times in my life. But the thing it did it did for me it taught me it taught me a tremendous work ethic. Um, it taught me it taught me um, you know how I was able to experience traveling the world um, and seeing different things and seeing different cultures. And it also taught, and it also set me up to be where I am right now as a Division One college basketball coach because I don't think I would be a Division One basketball coach if I didn't make those sacrifices that I made as a player and that hard work that I put in. You know, sometimes you work really hard and you don't get the result that you that you think you should get, or you don't get what God think you think God should give you. But He's also have have His plan for you already made out. So I think that my plan was. He taught me how to develop me as a player. I taught he gave me the gift to develop myself as a player, and which led me into transition into you know coaching and and developing other players. Because if I took myself, who I don't think a lot of the players I work with are way talented, more talented than me, and I was able to turn myself into a pretty decent player. So if you give me a kid that has some talent and some skill. But just need you know some guidance and some mm-hmm. and some and some coaching and some development. Then you know I think the sky's the limit for him. And you know and that's kind of credit to my wife too because she um, told me um, a long time ago um, while I was still playing that you know that's I would be coaching and I would be doing some of the things that I'm doing. And she saw that she's one of the first people to see that in me um, before I saw it in myself. So. Ain't that dope when you know you married the right woman? <laughs> and then you like, she she be telling you stuff, you like, I don't know if I see that. She like, nah, I see this. And then later, and then she be like, I told you. I told you, I told you this was gonna de- happen. She definitely gonna tell you. She, <laughs> they definitely gonna tell you they told you. <laughs> I told you. But you know, like I- what's going on, ballers? You might be listening to this audio version of the podcast, or you might be watching even the video version of the podcast, and you're probably thinking, well, what would it take for John to come to our campus? What would it take for John to come to our school and to teach our students media training, to talk about podcasting, and even the whole world of media? Well, luckily for you, all you have to do, friend, is just click the link just down below in the show notes where it says, book John to speak, all right? And then we can go right there. We can set up time to have a conversation, and I would love to learn more about you, love to learn more about your student athletes and how we can serve and support them at a high level, okay? So just hit the link just down below, and we look forward to having a conversation with you. I, I'm, I'm 100% honest. Like, she literally told me that, that stuff, and then the time she was telling me, I thought she was, I don't say I thought she was crazy, but I was just looking at her like, I don't even see nowhere near, I don't see none of that in my life, in my future. <laughs> Like it was hard, and I was like, I see none of that in my future. So, man, you, you must really know me. A guy must really sent you a sign <laughs> to tell you this stuff. And I mean, like, here we are, twenty twenty four. Wow, everything, everything that we was talking about. I mean, we here. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so talk, talk, talk a little bit about the like about the the, the player development dynamic because i think some people don't necessarily understand what that is all the time but like it is so is player development is this person a a coach or they part coach or what what does that look like in in your realm with with basketball um me personally i so (laughs) i like i said i was kind of i don't want to say pushed in this direction but god god put people around me in my life to to show me like this was my purpose and what I needed to be doing. And obviously, you know, we all been at a time in our life to where we didn't listen to God and we, we it was hard for us to listen to God for the purpose of our lives. And during that time, I used to like 
fight it a little bit, you know, like, you know, uh, my 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 son, he played for an AAU team um, for a guy, and he, every time I would go to his practice to, with my wife just to watch him practice, the guy would ask me, when you, hey, I need you to train my son. Like, when can you train my son? And I'm like, I'm not a trainer. I don't train. <laughs> and, my wife, and if I wasn't there, he'd ask my wife, and she would come home and say, um, the Lord asked if you could train his son, and I'm like, I told him I don't train, I don't train kids. I don't, I don't I don't know how to train. But I'm saying that to say like this the the kid who he his son I've been training him since the sixth grade, and right now he's a top forty top fifty player in the country mm-hmm. as a junior getting ready to be a senior. So I've been training him for a long time. But his dad was placed in my life to push me towards what I'm doing, and I fought it. Wow. For a while, and you know, which was crazy. To it, it, it's funny how stuff come full circle. But going back to your point about the player development dynamic, I worked myself out as a player. You know, I, I didn't have obviously during that time we didn't have trainers and player development coaches and things like that. So um, that's another part of what I'm saying about my purpose. I had four walls and two goals in the in the court in the basketball, and I, I taught myself. I, I I remember I used to sit in the gym by myself and I would think of drills I would think of you know just ways I could get better and stuff would just come to my head and I would just work on it and I would just make up drills myself like literally it's crazy but um that dynamic you know I feel like it was a gift that God gave me to be able to to develop players and connect with players too because obviously a player coach you know what guys are going through you know what type of situations they in you've been in their shoes before you know and stuff like that but i i don't like the word trainer um i think a trainer is somebody that shows you skills and teach and do drills with you and things like that and i don't like the word trainer so i always told people like i'm not a trainer i'm a player development coach because i spend time with kids on developing their skill but i also spend time with developing their mind because i understand i had a rough journey I, mm. I went to junior college, went to a D2, finished at a D3, and played overseas for nine years. You think that was easy or that road was just, you know, a cakewalk? No. I went through a lot of adversity, times where I wanted to quit or times where I questioned God. Is like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Why am I still chasing this? You know, felt like a fool at times. So I understand how strong you got to be mentally. So I teach a lot of young players, like, Man, this game is more mental than it is physical. Like, I don't care what I can teach you, a step back, a side step, a euro, Mm. and all of that. But if I can build your mind to be strong and build your mind for the journey, then the sky is going to be the limit for you. So, player development coach is is developing is way more into it than what people, um, what a common fan or a common basketball fan will understand because you can see a player – that's talented to have skill and that can play, but he's never been taught the right things of how to carry himself or how to work on, take care of his body or how to take the game serious and just all the nuances of the game. Mm-hmm. And then that player will not make it and it won't be because of his talent or his skill. It would be because of his mind and from the neck up. So I just, I just like to... I mean, I like to be referred to as a coach. I don't want to put myself in a box as a player, as a player development coach. And I and I'm player development is my thing. But I know the game of basketball, and I teach the game of basketball, and I also teach life skills too. You know, so that's that's kind of my 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 take on that. For sure. Do you have any desire to be a head coach? Right now, I don't. To be honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't. And maybe that's another that's another uh, another thing that I can't see. Um, like mm-hmm. I said about coaching in the first place, you know, when we was talking about that, but I, I don't have an aspiration to be a head coach right now. Um, I think I still got a lot of learning to do as an assistant and as a player development coach. So I'm just trying to learn as much as I can every day and be better. And, um, you know, maybe one day, you know, God will give me that sign. Like I need to be, be a head sure. coach. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I get that too. Cause I know, I know it's, it, it, it's a tremendous jump in, and time investment and right. work lo- like it's, I mean it's a different ball game when 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 you put that that head coach hat on. So I mean I I, I get that I get that and understand it. 
But uh, just 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 think my head coach, and 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 I know that you know you're currently at New Mexico State, right? Currently at New Mexico State. Right. Now I want to I want to get to that, but I I, I just want to ask you before we get there. I want to turn the clock back just a little bit, and I want you just to talk about, if you don't mind, about about the Kansas State culture with mm-hmm. with Coach Tang right. and like everything you know that like. Like that, they've been able to do over there on that side. Cause you was a piece of that. You was in there. Right. right. Yeah. Oh man, you know what? I like. I tell people this. Or I've told a few people this, and they, like the few people I've told, they know me, so they know. Like my wife, like she know how much I love to play. When I played, I played every day, all the time. I would go anywhere to play. I literally had the best year of my life, basketball wise, last year. Um, at Kansas State. Like, it was the best year being a part of a team, whether I was playing or whether I was coaching. And it was just because, number one, Coach Tang is, um, man, I'll, Coach Tang is probably one of the top five human beings that I've met in my wow. life. Um, I, You know, it's hard to find a flaw with <laughs> Coach Tang. I know guys say nobody's on earth is perfect but yeah it's hard to find a flaw in jerome tang man he's he's a he's just a great dude great great dude and i think i'm a better human being just by not even a better coach i'm a better human being a better man by being with coach tang and he taught me so much um you know taught me so much talking to me and taught me so much just by watching him the way he interact with people the way he interact with his wife the way he you know, um, way in act with players, just just all around. He's just all around great dude, and he's a selfless leader. And it started with him, and he he built our he built that culture. You know, um, in a short amount of time, and connected with our players, and guys believed. And you know, um, it's funny. Um, obviously, we was one game away from the Final Four, and I think it was maybe December. Um, E.T. came and spoke to us, Eric Thomas. He came and spoke to us, and f- when the time that he left, um, we would send we would send messages in the group chat. Different coaches or players sometimes would send, you know, that we wanted to win a national championship in a group text, um, you know, and say it five times in a group text. And, like, we was doing that back in December. And so for, for us to go on the run that we had, man, that was, uh, that was it was tremendous and a blessing to be a part of, um, you know, I think the night before we played uh, FAU in the Elite Eight game, um, I was up for 24 hours and my wife was trying to make me go to sleep in the hotel. And I was like, how can I sleep? We about to, we about to play, play. we 40 minutes away from the Final Four tomorrow. I've been watching this stuff since I was a kid and to be in the moment, to be that close and to be I mean, a part of the NCAA tournament and being in win a Sweet 16 game and to be 40 minutes from the Final Four like it was it was hard for us to sleep in New York City playing at Madison Square Garden so it was just all man just a last year was just 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 I can't put into words how how great last year was for me man yeah that's, that's real man that's real that's real so now I, I want you just to t- tell me when when you hear when you hear this what 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 comes to mind. Trust your work. Trust your work. Um, <laughs> obviously, trust your work is a common. Um, I don't know how common it is. I see a lot of people um, saying it now more. I mean, I'm not saying that it's mine. Maybe I need to get it copyrighted <laughs> before it's too late. But you need to work on that probably getting that copyrighted. But um, when I hear trust your work, for me. It 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 um it's a, it uh what's the word I'm looking for? It's like it's what my journey was was has always been about. Um, for one, you know, I trusted um, myself and trusted my work um, as a player, and that's how I was able to achieve um, becoming a professional basketball player and. It's something that I try to instill in players because everything's not going to always go right. It's going to be some adversity. It's going to be some bumps in the road. And when you have bumps in the road and adversity hits you, the only thing you can fall back on is your work. Because if you fall back on your work, you're going to be able to get through those tough times. But 
when that adversity hit and them trouble times hit, if you don't, if you're not working hard and not, and and you're not, you know, work working towards something, then it's like, it's, it's easy for you to quit. It's easy for you to stop. But if you're going through a shooting shooting slump and you're in the gym every day, still getting up shots, and you miss a couple shots in the game, and you're getting up shots, and then the next game, you know, or that breakout game where you hit four or five threes in a row, then it's like, all right. I knew I was going to do this because I've been in this slump, but I also still been in the gym like I was making shots, you know. So that's why I use, uh, say the slogan, trust your work. I just feel like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing for players, you know, to understand like, hey man, like if I trust my work, then the results going to come. You might not, they might not come when you want them to come or, or when you know they're going to come, but they, they eventually going to come. You just got to trust it. Just got to trust what you're working on. So. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. And and, and I, as, as I was watching, I was looking at some of your content and seeing you, you know, seeing some of the, the drills, you how you were uh, working with the guys. And then it was a testament just of who you are and your work because seeing them drive in, and then you showing them how to still come out and extend. <laughs> and I just remember back to that McMurray game. You was just <laughs> getting to the cut. And that game, you probably remember, that game you probably had at least 30. I think you might have had like 20 at half. Because our coach was so mad. But and you just and then seeing that, seeing you still seeing you teaching that, 10, what, we 12 years later, right. 12, 13 years later. Right. And I'm just hearing you say, trust your work, trust your work. But you know, like looking at you know, you you getting uh, you getting that content. Like, what's your thoughts on like in, in, in terms of like where, where we are now with um, like the, the content creation, like with the athletes and or, or, yeah. Well, I'll I, I start there, and then we we, we can take it take it from there. Uh, for me, like to be honest, I I, I wasn't a big, I wasn't big on like filming my workouts per se um, a long time ago. But the thing, what happened for me was, I was the few players that I started with in Dallas. I started out with a couple guys, and I was working these guys out every day or every other day, and I wasn't filming nothing. I was just locked in on helping them, mm-hmm. you know. And it hit me one day. So I was talking. To, I don't know. I don't know who I was talking to. I can't even remember the person. But it hit me one day, and I was like, and somebody told me like, man, like. You gonna be, you gonna be a heck of a coach, bro. Like you gonna be, you gonna be one of the ones, man. Like you gonna be a big time Division One coach. You gonna be an NBA coach. You need to record this journey that you on. Like this, this is big. And I'm like, you know, again, like I'm not seeing it. I'm just like, man, I'm just helping these kids get better. And like the kids I was working with, you know, um, and I won't have to go in and say their name, but it was, it's, it's a few kids in Dallas that I was working with that wasn't ranked in the state of Texas, um, let alone the country, when I started working with them. And, like, they was all kids that nobody really knew about. And, you know, I think one or two of them maybe had a little buzz, but for the most part, um, they didn't have any any buzz around the city, let alone the country. Mm -hmm. And I just put in work with them every day and, like, dedicated my time, you know, whether it was time from my family, from my wife, from my kids, I was spending more time with them because I was in the gym all day with them, trying to help them get to their goals, and they got better. And people saw them getting better, and they saw them getting better because when it was brought to my attention, like, hey man, you need to document this journey that you on. And 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 what caught me was someone told me I can't remember who told me, but they told me the reason why you should um, document uh, content, um, record your content from your workouts is because you want to you be able to look at a guy progression, mm-hmm. you know, from the time you started with him, you know, maybe we working on ball handling and, and then uh, six months later, you can see where his ball handling at from the first time y'all worked on it. And it just kind of hit me and I was like, you know what, you right. And I started posting content here and there. And the kids I was posting, people was like, it's so funny because I remember it and, and, and like some people probably wouldn't say it, but it was kids that I was posting. Some of my kids that I was working with, I was posting them and people would ask me like, Man, who is who is that kid you working with? He look like he might be someone. He mean, he look like he all right. He talented, and right now some of those kids are top players in the country, right now, or you know playing, um, 
in the NBA or playing um, in high level Division One. So it's 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 just crazy how how that works. But that's kind of why I started posting content and and my reason behind it. But obviously it became a thing, and now everybody a trainer, um, obviously, and everybody like to post they post their workouts and stuff like that. But me, I don't care. Like I don't, I've had people steal my workouts or. Ask me for workouts. I'm not that type of dude. I give you a workout. I let you take workouts from me. I'm gonna post all. I'm gonna post some drills and stuff like that. Um, I think God has gave me a gift, and I'm not afraid to to say that I got a gift because I don't. People at um, some of my coworkers at New Mexico State uh, was asking me about this one day. Like I don't even. A lot of times I'm doing better this year, but. I don't even write down workouts a lot of times because, or write down drills a lot of times because, like, I literally can watch film on the player and and and, and watch a player play or or watch him play live. And if, when I get him in the gym, I'm able to, you know, I'm I'm just able to like, I don't know, I'm just able to work him out and and like, if you watch me work him out, it's like I you it looked like I wrote everything down and and went from one drill to the next, but it's just it's just a gift that God gave me, and I and I, I don't take credit for it. It's, it's all God. Family, I know you're enjoying this episode so far. I know you've been taking in the content, and I hope you're taking notes, right? I hope you're taking notes. But if you have not just yet hit that follow button on the podcast i need you to hit it i need you to hit it okay because i want you to be tapped in to where you get the latest episodes and even when we drop some surprise bonus episodes you want to be the first to know and you want to be the first to get it okay so wherever you're listening to this podcast at right now apple spotify wherever go ahead hit that follow button so you're tapped in and you get the episodes first all right now back to the episode yeah, that's definitely a gift, bro. Uh, and the re reason I say that is because I mean I'm, I'm not sure if you if you seen that you seen that new that new uh, LeBron podcast with LeBron and JJ right, where they break right. it down the film oh, and I stuff. Love it. I love it. Yeah, I, 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 love I, it. I I'm sure. Junkies, yeah, so I, love it. I, love, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, just but he, hearing you hearing you talk about hearing you talk about the game and just hearing hearing you just share that right like how you can look at somebody and then you and then you know you can go and basically put a workout together or like know where they need to be and what they need to work on. That makes me think about how LeBron was talking about, you know, how like, okay, we doing, you know, yeah. we doing a B.O.B. Yeah, and then, yeah, then you can go right or just go the other way. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's, just, it's one of them things. But that, that definitely is a gift, bro. Because I'm, I'm, I'm the guy who, like, I was sitting at Richland. I'm at Richland. And I'm sitting here trying to look at the plays. <laughs> I'm highlighting right. the five and the four different colors, and I need to be out there. I need to run through the play three times for nah, the sticks. And I, and I get that. That don't make that don't make you know. And I listen to what LeBron said, and, and LeBron didn't, he didn't. I mean, obviously, he didn't mean no harm to nobody. And it's just a gift that he has, and um, a gift that a few people have. Like I have that gift. Like I, I, I was a point guard, and like I could. If if a coach teach me a play, I'm gonna know it, and I'm like I'm not gonna forget it. Like I'm just gonna know it, and I'm gonna know how to run it from one side and on the other side without him telling me. I just I've been a point guard my whole life, and even now as a coach, I was a point guard. So as a coach, like it's easy when I when I watch stuff or when I see stuff, it's, it's just easy for me to retain it. I mean, everybody not like that. Some people need to be on the floor with it live, and yeah. some people need to look at it a bunch of times or whatever and like that don't make me better than nobody it's just a gift that god gave some of us for sure and bro for the record when i seen you out there i was like nah he's not a point guard you was, you, i was like you're not supposed to be here bro <laughs> i was like he's too big to be a point guard this don't make sense but then you was moving up the floor down the floor i'm like what in the world but uh man so i want to i want to take a slight want to take a slight pivot and man i, I want i want you just to talk about 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 hustle hustle with heart Talk, 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 tell, tell us what, tell us what it is and tell, just tell us, you know, what, what you, what you, uh, what, what's, what's your purpose behind that? Um, we started Hustle With Heart, um, because, I mean, I kind of needed, we needed, uh, we needed, uh, something behind my, my, my training, I guess, and, and, and what I was doing, um, player development wise, um, and Hustle With Heart just kind of hit, um. My wife didn't help me come up with it, and I mean it is it's self-explanatory. I, I mean, gotta have some hustle and some heart if you're trying to get, accomplish great things in this in, the, in this life. And so, 
um, started that and you know I wanted to do something um, in the community where I'm from to give back to kids um, that grew, grew up in the same situation uh, same situations that I grew up in and that's something that I don't take lightly even now like I haven't done it we haven't had camp um, in a year two what is it been baby two this is the second year I think this is the second oh okay so I think this is the second or third year we haven't um, haven't got to do haven't gotten to do it and like I'm trying to put myself in a position to where I can do it again because I I can and keep it going um, because like I just believe that that's another thing that God you know um, put me in position for to do stuff in my community where I'm from because people don't understand like man it's it's really, really hard to to make it from South Dallas. Like, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like, it's it's really, really hard. The odds are stacked against you, um, just the way that you brought up. And I'm not I'm not bashing my parents. I'm not bashing, you know, my family or nothing like that. But it just is what it is. Like, where are we from? A lot of people don't make it out. There's only a handful of people that make it out. And if you wanted the people that God choose for you to make it out, then you you owe you owe everybody over there to to, to come back and try to you know do mm-hmm. something positive because there's not a lot of positivity over there. And I just pride myself on trying to trying to do that and be that. And I'm trying to position myself to where I can do that even more in a more impactful way because I know how much it would mean to the community and to the kids over there. Because, again, going back to what I said, unless you know somebody from over there or you, um, sorry about that, unless you know somebody from over there or you've been over there and around in that area, then you probably won't understand, like, how hard it is to, to, to make it from make it from over there. And I don't, I don't, I don't take that lightly by, by, by any means. And sometimes I don't go back, I don't go back over there often. But when I do, when I do go back over there, it always give me a reminder. Like God always give me a reminder. I'm we was just over there. Uh, we was just over there Saturday. We was just over there Saturday, and like just being over there and just people that saw me and was talking to me and you know um, it just motivated me even more because I'm like, man, like I'm 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 I'm, I'm supposed to be giving back to, 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 to my community and doing stuff in my community because they, you know, it's people, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm just a regular old person, but there's people over there that really look up to me and really, really root for me and really, really think I could, I could help change stuff over there. So I don't take that for granted. For sure, man. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Now, if, if, if I was, if I was to ask your, your, your players at New Mexico State, describe Coach Hart, what would they say? Say, I mean, I will hope, I will hope they will say, and I'm not perfect by any means, but I will hope they will say, Coach Hart is a, he's a stand-up dude, a guy, friend, man, um, you know, a guy that, a coach that knows basketball and loves basketball and passionate about basketball, and um, a guy that cares about them more than um, just their basketball skills. For sure. For sure. All right. So now, now, now we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We're gonna switch it up, and now this, this is the this is the this or that segment. All right. So it's just a little bit, little bit of fun. And I'm gonna ask you like you choose you choose one or the other. All right. Are right, you ready? Go ahead, take a sip of your water. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. <laughs> Boneless wings or bone-in wings? Oh, okay. Do, 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 do you know bon- do you consider boneless to be a real a, a buffalo wing or nah? You don't consider that? Nah, I think boneless is boneless is more for it's more for women. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, I, I just don't I just don't see a lot of men going to go ask for boneless wings. So, you know. <laughs> I got you. I'm used to bone in. I, I like bone in. I'm not being. I'm not being a sexist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For sure. Point. For sure. For I'm sure. I'm bone in. I'm bone in. Dude. Okay. So, so, so you're gonna do a two dribble pull up, or are you gonna finish at the cup? Ah, I love 
finishing at the cup. I was about to say, I knew that was gonna be the answer there. <laughs> I knew that I knew that I knew that was gonna be the answer there. Oh man. Uh and then uh do you do you prefer do you prefer small gatherings or big parties? Mm, that's a beautiful question. Small gatherings, big parties. It's hard for me to answer that because I'm a homebody, but I would say small guy. No, I would say big parties, big parties. Okay, okay, that, that's it, that's it. Okay, that, that's it for that, that's it for that. So now, now I want to, I want to do the, I like to do the winter circle of the week, and this is just somebody that, this is somebody that you see, they've been grinding, they might have been flying under the radar, other people haven't seen them, and uh, and I, I kind of like to put this together because this, this is somebody that you know you want to just shout out. But then you're also saying, John, I think this person would be a good guest to come on your show next. But who do you think would be the winner circle for you? Somebody who, you know, been flying under the radar and you just want to give them their flowers. Um, man, I would, off the top of my head, I would say my girl Jazz, man, uh, pro-life, pro-life training, man. She... She's uh she's dope. She's been grinding for a long time, training. Um, she's helped develop a bunch of kids around the Metroplex, and she's a female, and she got her own gym now. She's doing her thing in Rylet. Um, You know, I'm just proud of her. That's my dog. She had dreams of getting her own gym. She used to work me out some when I was playing, and um, she she got her own gym and she got that thing rolling, man, and and she doing her thing, and 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 she a female in the business in a, in a dom- male dominant sport, and she she she's really doing her thing, you know, and flying under the radar. So I I would say shout out to my girl Jazz, man. That's what's up, Jasmine Cannon. That's what's up. Yeah. Okay. 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 So now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna ra- ra- round this thing off with a bow. But uh, now uh, th- this is the part where I just like to, you know, it's called the Dear Student Athlete segment, okay. and this is the w- the part where you know you you take the you take a moment and you share uh, a tip and one resource that that you want to just give to a student athlete, like you know what like what's a tip, and then what's you know a resource that you feel would be beneficial to add to add value to them. Uh, the tip uh, the tip I would give young student athletes is to listen um, is a is is a part is a big part um, because I think when you're young you know we're just wired to feel like we know it all and we got it all figured out um, you know and we don't you know so I think the biggest one of the biggest tips I can give a young student athlete is to just listen listen to your coaches listen to your parents um, listen to the people in your circle that has your best interests at heart because if you do listen, then that will that will stop you from making, you know, the mistakes and going through the pitfalls, you know, because you're already going to have some trouble. You're already going to have some adversity to get to where you're trying to get to. You don't want to add no more adversity on yourself. And if you would, you can avoid that by just listening to, you know, your coaches and your, your parents and your friends or your, your you know, your, your friends or family that's close around you that, that know what they're doing and know what they're talking about. So that would be, that would be my, that would kind of be my tip and my resource because, that's, I mean, yeah. like, man, you, your resource is the people that you, that you're around that love you, that, that, that know what they're doing and, and all you got to do is listen sometimes and, and you know, you can go a little further in, 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 in your journey and in your career. That's good. That's good. Coach Hart, let them know where they can find you, follow you, connect with you. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Coach Hart32. Um, follow me on Instagram, Coach Hart32. Um, yeah. Man. That's it. Yeah, I appreciate you stopping through. Yes, Man, sir. It's, it's been real. Everybody out there. Uh, who, who's tapped in? Uh, y'all, m- make sure to tap tap in with, with Coach Hart, man, because I'm 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 curious to continue to follow his journey and you know see how he continues to elevate uh, not only players but just in people's lives a- as a whole. But uh, if y'all are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you're listening on the audio platforms, be sure to follow. But this is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones, and this is where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Sure, sure. What's going on, family? Uh, If you enjoyed this content, I need you to stop right now. Stop what you're doing 
and I need you to smash that subscribe button, all right? Smash that subscribe button and then drop a comment just down below. Like, what did you like about the video? What can we continue to improve in terms of our videos? Or even what are some topics that we can cover on this platform, all right? So do those two things for us. Smash that subscribe button. I'm gonna pause for a second. Did you hit it yet? If you didn't, smash that thing and then leave us a comment because I would love to hear from you and I would love to interact with you. All right, family, until next time, peace and God bless. This is Beyond the Ball where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Beyond the Ball Podcast.